515 subscribers. 515 subscribers and if you've been with us from the beginning I want to say thank you guys for the support for being there and if you're new to the channel please hit like hit subscribe and click the little bell boom sundial growers sndl the stock's been beaten down a lot so get ready to look at this chart i hope you guys are ready and here's the scary red bloody chart this stuck out on my radar middle of the end of last year i had opened a position in planet 13 plnhf we also started a position in ycbd and this was one of the other companies that at the time if i wasn't if i wasn't so focused on crypto i probably would have started a position in this somewhere around here when the pandemic hit i'd say around july or august is kind of when it got on my radar there was a lot of bullish news on the cannabis industry everyone was spending their time at home we had the stimulus checks and obviously people were spending their money on cannabis type products it really started to take off in january and at its peak we saw almost four dollars probably did touch it since then though it came down like a stone this thing came down the hype that the entire cannabis industry experienced last year sort of dying down got kind of boring and we saw we saw money coming out of that industry as there would seem to be no more new catalyst we dropped 89 <laughs> percent over 161 days uh last year very very painful that's a very very painful thing to watch but if you held if you held or better yet if you bought the, if you bought them if you bought the bottom you were treated to a 2,689% return in 100 days. So why are we talking about this stock? We're looking at a stock here that was $4 and is now sitting in like bargain basement territory at 50 cents. What it seems to be is an overall, a, a trend in the overall industry. Here's YCBD, another company that we've talked about. I think we've done a video or two on this company. Another great company that we feel has incredible potential. But you can see that they too, since a high in, in February have come down a lot. An interesting thing to note here is this is Aurora Cannabis, which typically when you talk to people about, you know, the cannabis stocks to buy, this is one that is frequently mentioned. Their market cap is 1.4 billion. So this is one of the leading companies, at least one of the leading leading cannabis stocks that I know of, and they're at a market capitalization of 1.6 1.46 billion. Planet 13 is at 900 million they have not crossed the billion dollar you got a company like ycbd they're even smaller they're at 113 million but sundial growers is at 1.32 billion dollars so sundial growers actually has essentially the um, identical market cap to roughly the identical market cap to aurora cannabis yet their share price is 60 cents it's heavily diluted but that's not to say we still can't make money the same amount of money goes into aurora cannabis as goes into sundial growers both stocks would effectively see the same percentage jump remember as investors what we're looking for is to amplify our wealth the money doesn't care where it happens it doesn't care if it's a two three four five x it doesn't care where it comes from as long as you feel strongly about the the company your thesis and you also feel good about the allocation i let it ride this is not a main position in, for me, and I can see this not being a main position for, for a lot of other investors. It's sort of like a speculative play that you're looking to see. You know, you're throwing a small allocation to in the hopes that you can two, three, four, five X your money. But what does that mean? That means that if a deal comes along, so Tesla gets back under $600, you, you're going to want to capitalize on that and you know and I personally would would take that money out of something like Sundell Growers and put it into a more value stock or a more high quality stock and so I think that what we're seeing is a bit of the industry got cold a lot of the catalysts like the stimulus that were that were pumping the stock ended there was also positive catalysts on other stocks that I just felt they needed the attention we that was the time to strike and I said well if I never see if I don't see my two three four five x from sundial grow is fine so be it but it has come down so it's now hovering around this massive support level that we've seen it touch several times over the last couple of years we've seen it touch in on the 16th and it bounced hard off of that it actually, you saw it struggling to break through here around this level, 62 cents, or all of May. Finally broke through another level of massive profit taking, sunk way below. And then I guess the market realized that it was too low around the end of the last year and it started to fight its way back up, almost testing it again. Did finally break through. And again, when it broke through, it, it, it fell apart, broke through again, kind of like a fake, fake bounce. And then finally, popped through in February and then the bottom came out of the stock market and now we're sort of in this channel 
a converging descending channel. But considering that after one, two, three, four, five days of falling, it is now finally seen a green candle. It's possible that this support line will hold. And look, it doesn't, doesn't mean that it has to break through. It could very easily just collapse from this point forward. And if it did so, what level would it go to? We could drop down to 40 cents. We could go down as low as 20 cents. I mean, we might even come back down here. This was at 13 cents. I mean, you could have picked this stock up 13 cents in October. And even now, 13 cents in October, you would be at, a, at what, a 4X at this current price. I mean, imagine the profit you were sitting at at $4. So it's risky. It's super risky to put in a huge amount of money on something that's in the you know, 12, 13 cents. Talk to, I'm, I'm looking at you, all the AL, ALYI investors, but you still can make money. Now, why am I bullish on this? Why put your money into this versus something else? The major catalyst is still the relaxation of cannabis laws in the U.S. The stock has fluctuated widely on any news surrounding cannabis legalization in the U.S., but it seems to be navigating through the headwinds right now as the Canadian cannabis industry is showing signs of oversaturation and there will likely be some blood in the space before margins start to seriously improve. Sundahl's raise and strategy pivot put them in a position to survive while excess producers are worked out of the market. The most important foreign market that Sundial can access right now is the U.S. domestic market. Remember, they're not really making money in the U.S. right now. And a lot of that has to do with laws federally in the United States that still ban cannabis on a federal level, even though there are states that have legalized it. And now they're even more relaxed with it. Like in L.A., it's actually just recreational. You just walk into a place, no card, no nothing, just with an ID and you can get it. They're still not able to penetrate into the market because of a federal ban on marijuana or a classification of it as illegal. This is a company, they're operating, they have a working business that is growing, no pun intended, and they, they still do not have access to the largest market in the world. You want to talk about getting in early. The U.S. House of Representatives approves the cannabis banking bill. The U.S. House of Representatives on Monday passed legislation that would allow banks to provide services to cannabis companies in states where it is legal, a step towards removing what analysts say is a barrier to development of a national industry. So essentially, because of the stigma still attached to cannabis as a drug or an illegal drug, the owners of the owners and operators of those companies have a difficult time just doing general banking. Banks have generally been unwilling to do business with companies that sell marijuana or related products, fearing that they could run afoul of federal laws. That has left companies in the marijuana industry with few options, including relying on just a small handful of financial institutions or doing business in cash. 36 states have legalized medical cannabis, while 17 states now allow adult use, according to the National Conference of State Legislators. This law that they passed opens the way for banks to allow them to operate like a traditional business, freeing up some of those financial hurdles that those companies deal with when trying to grow grow, grow their business. It's not just that. I mean, I would imagine it's access to capital, you know, get, getting business loans. I'd imagine that these things are more difficult for that company because of the negative stigma that's attached to it. This House of Representative bill is the first step towards eliminating those barriers, and these companies are, can be free to fly. From Investor Place, it's worth noting that the cannabis industry has long-term positive catalysts. Sundell expects the legal cannabis industry to be worth $47 billion by 2025. But I take that with a grain of salt. $47 billion or whatever they say it is worldwide, that's fine. But tell us what you're going to do to capture your piece of it. For Q2, the company reported net cannabis revenue of $9.2 million and an EBITDA loss, excluding some items of $200,000. I believe that the company's revenue growth is likely to accelerate in the company quarters. A key reason for this is Sundahl's acquisition of Spirit Leaf Retail. Spirit Leaf has the largest cannabis franchise retail network in Canada. For Q1, Spirit Leaf reported sales of $8.8 .8 million and an EBITDA margin excluding some items of 6%. As a result of the acquisition, Sundial will have access to 100 plus stores across six provinces. The deal will help the company significantly expand its brand visibility. Since the acquisition was completed in July, the positive impact is likely to be seen in 2022. If cannabis is legalized and at the federal level in US, the Sundial is likely to enter that country. They acquired essentially 100 retail stores. Congress in the United States has now made it easier for cannabis companies to bank. And now it seems like we're on the verge to have cannabis legalized federally, which would open the door to the, to the largest market for a company like them.
Again, this is not financial advice. This is the kind of stuff that I do when I'm researching companies that I might want to invest in. This is the kind of stuff that Vitaly and I send back and forth to each other. So I figured I would just come in and share it with you guys. Personally, I'm bullish on it. And what do I think? What do I see price, price target wise? Well, you know, it's hard to say what the price target could be. This stock really seemed to have taken off at the end of October last year after it had capitulated for a long time. I mean, it literally was in free fall from when? From May 21st to what? November, November 2nd. That's almost five months no i mean is this a four dollar stock we do know this house judiciary committee approved the bill to federally legalize marijuana it is not yet clear if other panels will waive jurisdiction like they did last congress or if it has more steps to go before reaching the floor this time this is still a relatively young industry that's like i said it was still 17 states that it's not even legal on a state level there's still a long way to go and as you know the people that are in early are the ones that are set to benefit the most the number one positive catalyst for this stock is going to be the legalization of marijuana federally i do believe that this is something that the Democrats will probably push through. This seems to be high on the list of things that the, that the House of Representatives wants to accomplish. And so it seems like that's the trajectory where it's going. And again, that's part of the risk. If you're a bit risk averse and you want to wait and see what happens, go for it. But personally, me, I want my money in early. That's part of the risk. But that's also what's going to amplify the reward. Right now, we're sitting at 64 cents, a previous all-time high of let's say $4. It's about a 5.9x from here. And that's just if it gets back to its all-time high. I feel like it's already come down so much that in order for it to go lower, we're going to need to see some acts of some negative news in this space. So while I don't believe that there's necessarily any positive catalysts, at least on the short-term horizon, I also so don't see any negative catalysts in this space. It's more just like a dead sector that's boring. I mean, to be honest with you, it's just boring. But when it comes back into the mainstream media, it comes in hard it comes in hot and i do feel that we're just it's just a matter of time before we start to get those catalysts because at this point all we're going to see are more states legalizing it all we're going to see are which is going to open up more states to having them bank there which is going to open it up to be legalized on a federal level in other words when i try to look at what the the negative catalysts are for the industry as a whole I don't see that many. Again, anything can happen, but my belief is that no, I think we've hit a support level where people don't feel comfortable selling it here anymore. I feel like the people that were buying this thing, you know, when it was in the pennies, 12, 13 cents, have long gone and taken profit. And so I do feel like after this low here in November of 2020 of 12 cents, I don't know that we'll ever revisit that again. What we're looking at is way more upside potential than the downside. And again, the big catalyst that we're waiting for is whether or not weed is going to be legalized federally in the United States, but everything seems to point in that direction. Do your own research. There's other great companies out there and ultimately see what you decide. Let me know in the comments below if you have a position in Sundog Growers or in other companies in this space, which companies. If you're not invested in this or in other companies, tell me why or why not. Also, share your thoughts on what you think is going to happen over the next couple of months within this space. I personally, I'm bullish on it and I feel like by the time we're, at, we're in Christmas, we're not going to be at 64 cents. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate the support. 515 subs. That's amazing. Next stop, 600.